Hey film buffs, welcome back to Film Feature 43. I just got back from watching Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness, and I wanted to throw out my review of what I thought of the movie, as well as some goofier questions, kind of nitpicking the plot, and questions about where we go in the future with these characters as we left them in the movie. So obligatory spoiler warning, I'm going to probably say some things that are spoilers to the plot. I don't mean to, I'm trying to keep it as light as possible, but... Something might slip out. I'm kind of doing this off the top of my head. Also, you might want to just avoid YouTube altogether for a little bit until you can watch the movie because I've seen three cell phone videos of a movie theater screen showing a big part of the movie since I've been home, and I've only been home for about 20 minutes, so maybe just avoid YouTube altogether. But with all that being said, let's talk about Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness. So one thing that the MCU does really well, and I think is what gives it some of its longevity, is allowing itself to play with genres and having this be kind of the first horror movie of the MCU and having Sam Raimi be that inaugural horror director is the wise choice. Uh, Derrickson, I think, is a really good director, but Sam Raimi kind of has that campiness and horror comedy chops as well as previous superhero experience that blended together really well and made this as scary and horrific, if that's the word you want to use, as far as an MCU PG-13 movie could be. I think Sam was the best man for the job. And it's no surprise that it's getting a little bit darker in the MCU with some of the existential questions that TV shows like WandaVision and Moon Knight and Loki have had about your place in the universe and dealing with grief and dealing with abuse. The MCU is kind of taking a darker tone and this horror movie really is no different. It does ask existential questions like, hey, could things have been different if the Avengers handled things a little bit differently? Could we have not been snapped away for five years? Or if I'm not happy with this life, could I find a different life out there that I'm happier in? If one little change happened, would my life be better? That's the question this movie asks, and it's really the first time that we've seen this kind of point of view of how the Avengers handled Thanos. Uh, right after it happened, we kind of got the loss and the dread in Endgame, but we haven't seen post-snap except maybe Yelena and Hawkeye of how the Avengers handled Thanos and the anger that a lot of people have that if you would have done something different, Doctor Strange, none of this would have happened. It's kind of like being on a pedestal and not being able to live up what people's expectations of you are. You have these massive powers and the world thinks differently of you because of the choices that you make. And that's kind of the point, even Wanda's point of vision in this movie of You break the rules to become a hero. I do it, I become the enemy. That doesn't seem fair. All that kind of comes together in what is in a choice. If I make a choice to do this one thing, it's going to change my life forever. And that's really what this movie focuses on. Speaking of Wanda, I think she's come a long way from being this kind of B-tier villain who's kind of an underling of Ultron who puts nightmares in people's heads to being one of the most powerful characters in the MCU. And that transition is kind of important because in the comics, she's one of the most powerful people in Marvel Comics. So having her kind of be this henchman in Age of Ultron really was a letdown for a character but as we've gone on and her character's grown, you can see her power growing and she's becoming a threat that a lot of people know her to be in the comics. Speaking of characters, it is nice to see Wong kind of get his moment in the sun, even though he kind of did give up pretty easily whenever he got a little bad cop pushed his way. But it is nice to see that character kind of come into his own in this movie, not be in Doctor Strange's shadow, for the whole movie not be really that sidekick and get the respect that he's deserved from Strange because he seems to be just as powerful or at least as knowledgeable as Doctor Strange is so seeing him kind of get the respect that he's due was nice. We also see Doctor Strange grow in this movie a lot or at least he's to a point of growth that we haven't seen yet. I like this movie a lot better than I like the original 
mainly because I think Doctor Strange was a more likable character. Now, to be fair, in a movie that is an origin story, you're not going to have a perfect character, and he's far from perfect in this movie as well, but you got that character growth, and it made the movie a little bit more enjoyable to have a Doctor Strange that I felt like rooting for, who wasn't kind of like this petulant, arrogant child as we kind of saw him in the first one even though he's probably in his 40s, not really a child, but he acted more like a petulant child in that movie than he did in this one, and he actually cares about somebody really other than himself, and it really shows the character growth that Doctor Strange has gone through in the last five, six, seven movies. With all that good stuff being said, I was a little underwhelmed about the Illuminati. I felt like they kind of got taken out a little too easily for being that version of the Avengers kind of for the universe that they take place in but the movie wasn't called the Illuminati in the Multiverse of Madness so if they came in and saved the day that would kind of be a cop-out so I'm kind of glad they didn't go that direction but I feel like they should have put up a little bit more of a fight than what they did but I'm not a movie maker so and this brings us to the question and weird things I noticed in the movie portion of the video some of these questions might have simple answers and i might just be an idiot but i thought they were interesting enough to kind of add here just to see what you guys thought about the main question i have is why can't wanda have her own mini version of westview on that homestead farm place where she's not hurting anybody else she can have kind of this home place where she can kind of conjure her kids from scratch like she did in westview why can't she do that on that homestead where she had that big orchard? If she can make an entire orchard in her mind and have it real enough that Doctor Strange can see it and maybe think it's real for a short period of time, why can't she make her own bubble where she's not affecting anybody else and have her kids and vision in that reality? That's a question that I had since WandaVision. I thought that was going to be the resolution as... Westview was kind of breaking down and the illusion was kind of breaking down. I thought it was going to stop at that one house on the corner and that's where they were going to stay, but they didn't do it that way. And I guess that's not real good storytelling to have Scarlet Witch be your villain, but I think that would be an easier fix than trying to kidnap a girl that has multiverse hopping abilities. I don't know. That's just my opinion. Also, where is Vision in this quest to have these kids? In these other multiverses, there are other Wandas with kids who presumably have Vision as their father, but we don't see him anywhere in this movie. Maybe Paul Bentley was a little too expensive, but I just find it weird that she's envisioning and having dreams about these kids, but not the person who she supposedly loves, who she's upset that she killed for no reason. Also, apparently we're not getting a WandaVision Season 2 from some of the events in this movie. Namely, the fact that, spoiler, <coughs> Wanda seems to have died. But does that mean that her hold on Agatha's mind has gone away? And is that how we're getting an Agatha Harkness TV show that as soon as that pillar and the temple fell on Wanda that Agatha kind of gets that spell broken and she's free to do whatever she wants and maybe try to become the Scarlet Witch in herself. Another weird thing happened at the end of the movie where in the middle we see that America's mothers get yeeted into the multiverse somewhere and after coming back and everything being okay she didn't immediately go start looking for them which kind of was the crux of her trying to control her powers in the first place. I thought that was a little weird. And also the fact that they kind of shoehorned Doctor Strange's dead sister into it, who, uh, to my knowledge, we didn't even know he had a dead sister. It's really weird how most superheroes have to have some kind of dead relative to give them the motivation to go on, and they just threw Doctor Strange having a dead sister in there for kind of no reason so I thought that was a little weird as well but overall I think this movie and its effects and its story held up pretty well um I liked kind of the protagonist antagonist draw of witchcraft versus being a wizard it's not the same thing in this universe the fact that dreaming was kind of hopping from universe to universe was kind of an interesting 
plot point. I think that's something that they could draw on further with some of the characters in the future, where once you know that you're dreaming of something, you know it's out there, maybe you can achieve it by going to another multiverse. The multiverse is here to stay, especially if America Chavez is going to stay in the MCU. So it's interesting to see where they're going to go from here. But those are my thoughts on Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness. Let me know what you think if you've seen it so far. If not, sorry for the spoilers. I warned you. Anyway, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.